Best Bites Forever. Hey, what's up? Welcome to Best Bites Forever. Today I'm making this Bavarian apple cheesecake, but first I'd like to give a special shout out to all of my BBFs. I love you guys, and if you're not a subscriber, now's the time. Also, go ahead and click that like button, and let's rock it out. I'm going to start off here by peeling some Granny Smith apples, and I happen to have four very large Granny Smith apples. What I'm trying to end up with is about five cups of sliced apples, so once I get them peeled, I'm going to go ahead and core them. The easiest way that I have found to do this is just to quarter them, and then to take each of those quarters and lay them down and kind of cut them at an angle to pull that core out. My cores are getting set over to the side, of course, for my tortoise, and I kind of got a big one that time, but that is okay because Inky Dude loves these. Look at that pile that I have for him. Okay, moving right along, I'm going to go ahead and start slicing these up. So again, what is important here when you're slicing this or anything that you're going to be cooking is nice even slices. So that is the thickness that I'm looking for right there. I'm going to go ahead and continue slicing my apples and I'm kind of measuring them as I'm going. It doesn't have to be an exact measurement, you guys, but get pretty close to five cups. Put those into a bowl as you're going, and when you think that you have about five cups, let's go ahead and move them over here to a sheet pan. I have my sheet pan lined with a sill pat. You could also line it with aluminum foil, a little bit of baking spray, but you don't want to put them in there on a naked pan because they will definitely not be happy about that and they will stick. Cover that up nice and tight with aluminum foil, and that is going in the oven at 400 degrees Fahrenheit, of course, for 15 minutes. Moving right along, let's make our crust. So in the bowl, I have one cup of flour. I have also added in seven tablespoons of butter, along with a quarter cup of sugar going in, a half a teaspoon of vanilla, and a quarter of a teaspoon of kosher salt. Don't worry, I will leave all of these ingredients listed down below in the description. I'm going to use my hand mixer to kind of mix that up just to get it going. You could also use a pastry blender, a spatula, or your hands if you want to. I did end up switching to my hands just because my butter wasn't quite as soft as I wanted it to be, and I knew the heat from my hands was going to take care of that problem. Keep on going until you have what that looked like, and then go on to your pan. Here I have a 9-inch spring form pan. I have covered it with aluminum foil on the outside. That's just in case something stupid happens and something leaks out. I also sprayed the inside of it with cooking spray and now I'm just going to take that crust that I just now made and mash it down until it's nice and even. Do your best to make sure that it is even and also pressed all the way up against the edges and coming up just a tiny bit. Moving right along to our filling, I have two 8 ounce pieces of cream cheese in here. I have also added in a half of a cup of sugar, a teaspoon of vanilla, and I want to add in a little bit of lemon zest. This is totally optional but I do like the kind of zing that it gives to the cheesecake so I'm putting it in there. As you can see I'm using a micro planer to grate it in there. It gives a really fine fine grate and it is a super awesome kitchen tool. If you don't have one already, get one. No, I'm just kidding. You don't have to get one, but they are an awesome tool. And you know what? I will leave you a link down below of where to get one. How about that? So you can see see the nice little fine grate that it leaves. All right, perfect. I'm going to go ahead and use my hand mixer to mix this up and get it nice and creamy. It should only take a minute or two until it looks like this. Next, I'm going to add in two eggs, and these are also going to get mixed in with my hand mixer until my cheesecake batter is looking nice and creamy like this. No, like this. Okay, there it is. Nice and creamy like this. And then I'm going to take my spatula and scrape along the sides as well as the bottom. Don't skip this step. It is really important because the little bits of cream cheese like to hang onto those sides and bottom. And then your cheesecake ends up having chunks of cream cheese in it where it could have had cream cheese, cheesecake goodness with the sugar and whatnot mixed in. So anyway, scrape those sides and give it another mix until it looks like this. It should be nice and smooth and creamy. You don't have to mix it to death. Don't whip it. It's cool. Okay, moving along, I'm going to get my crust, which by the way is not cooked. You don't pre-cook this crust, and go ahead and put that cheesecake filling right on top. Smooth it out as best you can. You don't have to be too crazy about it here because we are going to be giving it a nice little shake. Shake, shake, shake. Shake, shake, shake. Okay, and also a few taps just to make sure that you get any air bubbles out of there. So, 
I am just putting that over to the side for a second and we're going to finish up our apples. Here I have a quarter of a cup of sugar mixed with a teaspoon of cinnamon and a quarter cup of almond slices. I'm going to mix those together with my measuring spoon. Why not? I hate doing dishes. Why dirty another spoon? And then I'm going to take this over to my beautiful apples which are in here nice and steamy. I've just taken them out of the oven and I'm uncovering them. I put them into a nice little pile and then I just sprinkle all of that goodness right on top of them and kind of stir and shuffle them around and sprinkle until they start to look something like this. Once I get them there, they're ready to go onto my cheesecake, nice and gentle, if you please, and then just kind of spread them around. It doesn't have to be perfect, but do try to cover as much as the cheesecake filling as you can. This goes into the oven, still at 400 degrees, for about 40 minutes until it looks like this. You can see the apples are all beautiful and set on top, and this is pretty good to go. This has to go into the refrigerator for at least six hours overnight is better, and when you cut it the next day, it is going to look like this. And of course, here is my lovely plate up, you guys. Hey, if you haven't subscribed already, make sure that you go ahead and do that now. Give this video a like, and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye!